Before we start, I'd like to remind you that you are watching the most fun horror channel on YouTube. If you only want to listen, that's fine. But if you want more of all that creepy goodness, you'll need to watch. We don't only read the story here. If that sounds good to you, it's all we do here. Subscribe and watch to the end where I'll recommend more of the most fun creepy content on YouTube. Werewolves. Just normal people like you and me. But then, on the night of the full moon, something happens. A heat is felt. The werewolf starts taking their clothes off. Desperately, they run outside, hoping a cool breeze will give them some relief. But it won't. Their metabolism is elevated to a dangerous level. Then, there's rapid muscle growth. The body is using up all of its resources. And then there's the hunger. A transformed werewolf can have five times the body mass it has when not transformed. So it goes off, desperately eating anything it can find. And we in the audience watch. But why? The werewolf is strong, wild, and free. And these attributes are considered attractive to us. The truth is, there's a part of all of us that wants to be free, that wants to break the rules, Sometimes society says no, and we want to reply yes. In modern storytelling, the werewolf represents these, but with a slight twist. The werewolf cannot say no. It has to act on its impulses. So we all watch the struggle of a person trying to retain control. But where did the werewolf legend come from? Well, to start, we need to go back to ancient Greek mythology. King Lycaon is credited as being the first werewolf. King Lycaon was powerful and had many sons. The gods took notice and suspected King Lycaon might be overly proud. To test him, Zeus disguised himself as a commoner and visited Lycaon's kingdom. Before long, the people were able to tell that Zeus was no commoner, and they began to worship him. Word made it to King Lycaon that there was a god walking among his people. He. Being the proud king he was, decided he would test this stranger, so he and his sons had a banquet and invited Zeus. When it came time to eat, Lycaon offered Zeus a plate of meat made from parts of a child in an attempt to trick the stranger into eating human flesh. Zeus was furious. The disrespect of being tested, the fake banquet, and child sacrifices. Zeus struck down Lycaon's sons and transformed Lycaon into a wolf. In this first account of a werewolf, being turned was a punishment. But hundreds of years later, in the Scandinavian countries, the idea of turning into a powerful animal was so valuable, Vikings would attempt to induce it. Elite Viking warriors known as berserkers would make a drink with bog myrtle and hallucinogen-inducing plants like henbane, stinking nightshade, and the mushroom Amanita muscaria. Bog myrtle was used to induce a calm feeling and was a powerful antibacterial agent used in healing salves and to preserve beer, and the hallucinogens would get the warriors into a crazed state. After drinking this berserker potion, the warriors would begin to shiver and their teeth would chatter as they sat in a trance until the berserk state was reached. The berserk state was a state of unmatched aggression, increased strength, and the ability to ignore pain. The berserkers would wear animal skins into battle. The word berserk itself means bear shirt. These warriors would wear the skins of bears, wolves, and boars into battle and act like wild animals. Berserkers would howl and bite their shields, leading to some of the legends of berserkers being actual shapeshifters that would transform into the animals to win battles. By the Middle Ages, after Christianity spread through most of Europe, the werewolf legends mixed with the religion, leading to the view of werewolves being evil. It became the belief that werewolves were people that would make deals with the devil to gain the ability to become powerful monsters. This led to the werewolf hunts. Hundreds of years before the Salem witch trials, werewolves were being hunted throughout Europe. Werewolves were blamed for any number of things. Poor crop yields, illnesses running through towns, and even the deaths of animals caused by actual wolves. People accused of being werewolves would be arrested and tortured until they confessed. 
This created a dangerous positive feedback loop mechanism. People would look for werewolves to blame, torture people until they confessed to being werewolves. This would strengthen their belief in werewolves being responsible for the normal highs and lows of life. These events, however, did on occasion lead to the apprehension and execution of serial killers. In France, Pierre Burgot and Michael Verdun were serial killers that targeted children. When captured, they made a fantastical confession, claiming three demon horsemen offered Pierre money and safety to renounce God, heaven, and his baptism. He agreed, and at a later time went with Michael to be anointed, finalizing his agreement with the demons. Once anointed, he started growing hair everywhere and was filled with superhuman strength. Michael also started transforming. After the transformation was complete, the two ran off as werewolves and began doing evil. Their worst crimes, of course, were the killing of children. The pair claimed to have an ointment that would allow them to transform. They were burnt alive for their crimes because it was one of the only known ways to completely kill a werewolf. Around the same time, Germany was dealing with what some consider to be the most famous werewolf, Peter Stubb. According to a combination of legends, documents, and his own confession, Peter Stubb, a well-off German farmer, was given a belt by the devil that would allow him to turn into greed personified, a werewolf. Peter would run around eating men, women, children, even pregnant women. Peter was missing his left hand, leaving only a stump. It was alleged that someone cut off his left front paw while he was transformed, resulting in the stump when he turned back into a man. He was executed for his crimes on Halloween in 1589. There are also illnesses that help cement the idea of werewolves into the minds of ancient people. Hypertrichosis, also known as werewolf syndrome, is a genetic abnormality causing excessive hair growth on the face and on the body. Hypertrichosis can be present at birth or can appear later in life, making it look more like the person had been transformed into a werewolf. Rabies is an easy one to see similarities in. The infection is spread by scratches and bites, and animals infected with rabies go berserk, like the Viking warriors did. Another illness with potential links to lycanthropy is Pitt-Hopkins syndrome. Pitt-Hopkins syndrome is a rare genetic disorder. People with Pitt-Hopkins are often intellectually challenged, suffer from epilepsy, and have a difficult time breathing properly. They can also have a very difficult time speaking, if they learn to speak at all. There are also anomalies in the facial features of someone with Pitt-Hopkins syndrome, like deep-set eyes, a large mouth, widely spaced teeth, and ears with a thick and overfolded helix, the outermost fold of the ear. People with Pitt-Hopkins are not dangerous. Generally, they're very happy and smile often, but deep-set eyes, a wide mouth, and spread apart teeth might lead an uneducated person to believe they're seeing some sort of hybrid. In fact, in 1725, a boy was found wandering the woods in Germany on all fours and naked. He was called Peter the Wild Boy. Many thought he was either a werewolf, some wolf-human hybrid, or at a minimum raised by wolves. He ate with his hands and couldn't speak. Peter eventually was sent for and ended up adopted by the courts of King George I and King George II. Years later, it's believed that Peter the Wild Boy was just someone with Pitt Hopkins syndrome. Now we've seen becoming a werewolf go from being a curse in ancient Greek mythology, to being desirable to Scandinavian warriors, to being a powerful state brought on by magical items you could only get by dark and evil means. But what about the full moon? Classic werewolves infect other people by biting them, and then they turn on the full moon. According to a study performed at Australia's Calvary Mater Newcastle Hospital, a full moon brings out the beast in many humans. The study lasted from August 2008 to July 2009 and measured acts of violence at the facility. In the time measured, there were 91 violent acute behavioral incidents at the hospital, 25 of them, 23% of the incidents overall, happened during the full moon. A full moon occurs once every 29 and a half days, or roughly 3% of the time. For 23% of the incidents to happen on 3% of the days means the chances of an act of violence is more than 7 times higher on the full moon. It was observed patients were more likely to attack staff and display animal-like behavior like scratching, 
biting and spitting when the moon was full. The study was unable to determine the reason behind the violence. It is undeniable that the moon is able to create changes in pressure on the Earth. The tides are created as a direct result of the moon's gravitational force acting on the ocean. Maybe some people are more sensitive to this, but the moon's power is not limited to the tides and people. The National Institute of Health released a study in the year 2000 titled, Do Animals Bite More During a Full Moon? Retrospective Observational Analysis, where they plainly state, In our study, we showed that an association exists between the lunar cycles and changes in animal behavior, and that animals' propensity to bite humans accelerates sharply at the time of a full moon. So while it's not fully understood, the full moon can also make some animals go berserk. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this journey from ancient curse from the gods to modern illustration of the internal struggle we all face from time to time. If you enjoyed this, you'll probably like my video on the origins of vampires. Or, if you're in the mood for something really creepy, check out my series on true encounters. True scary stories sent in by you. Until next time, take good care of yourself.